so dear students i welcome you for the introductory lecture of process control now the five basically the process control is required one is that the product quality and the error free operations so there should not be error there should not be any accidents and the quality of the product that should be maintained at the desired level now how you are going to maintain the quality of a product by applying this process control basically these are your control systems controllers are used and these controllers are uh, attached to your basic chemical equipments that is you say your reactor distillation column heat exchangers and they are ultimately controlling the flow once the flow that is controlled then one can manage all the different parameters that is temperature pressure concentration and whatever the parameters that is required for a specific process that can be managed with the help of this flow controller now flow controller that is basically you are going to control it with the help of a control valve so control valve is the heart for your process control now how you are going to control that control valve that requires the understanding of mathematics that requires the analysis of the output what you are getting and depending on the other factors one has to decide the different variables now in industries uh, basically you require the high quality product that is required and the other aspects they are related to the safety then your production specifications environmental regulations operational constraints and the economic constraints so all these are the different operational objectives which lead to the advancements of the process control then when you talk of optimization optimization is giving you the optimum values by eliminating the higher cost quality quantity all these things are to be optimized so optimum conditions are important for continuity quality economic aspects of the process these are your the main variables then when you think of the important characteristics of a process control system the focus of an engineer must be on the process that is basically what is the process that is happening that is of our main concern now consider a example of driving a bike on the road and you have to reach to the institute in a specific time so depending on the time constraint time is one of the constraint you are going to manage with the accelerator speed once you have decided the vehicle speed say 40 km per hour i am going with a speed of 40 km per hour that is my targeted speed this is my set point what i have defined now i am driving a vehicle so i have decided that i will go at a rate of 40 km per hour now how i 
I'm going to control his speed of 40 kilometers per hour. That is with the help of a accelerator. Now accelerator, what it do? As we raise the accelerator, the amount of the fuel going into the engine that increases. Carburetor inlet valve for the fuel that uplifts and the amount of the fuel going into the engine that increases or decreases if you reduce the accelerator this is our basic controlling action for maintaining the desired speed this is very common example and now your mind gives the corrective action if the speed is say 45 kilometers per hour your mind takes a decision your mind do the processing and give the instructions to your wrist so that you are going to reduce the accelerator as you are going to reduce the accelerator the amount of the fuel going into the engine that reduces as a result my speed of the vehicle slightly reduces now as i have reduced it it reaches to 35 kilometers per hour and this can happen and there is a point at which i can reach where i am maintaining a speed of say 40 kilometers per hour consistently in this case we are assuming that we are on a straight highway where no obstructions are there this is one situation one process control type of the system where no obstructions are there or no other side inputs are there now when you optimize it I am going to raise the certain speed again I am going to reduce the certain speed of the accelerator so that I am trying to maintain the constant speed so this is what the unsteady states they are there the speed is not constant at 40 kilometers per hour after certain time the speed may achieve the 40 kilometers per hour with my accurate controlling of the accelerator so this is what the dynamics for dynamics is nothing but the unsteady state the transition state transition state what is going to happen in this transition states that is what we are going to discuss in our dynamic problems then this dynamic behavior of the individual units and the process as a whole is to be understood. It is always the best to utilize the simplest control system that will achieve the desired objective. The design of process determines how it will respond dynamically and how it can control. That is what our designing, that is what our mind gives the instructions. Mind that has to process and then give the instruction towards the hand. That is what our designing is being done by our mind or say brain. Now this is uh, to maintain the desired conditions in a physical system by adjusting the selected variable in the system consider the continuously mix heating tank where aim is to provide the constant temperature for the output fluid now i have to maintain the constant temperature for this outlet fluid so whatever the temperature inlet temperature I require the constant outlet temperature say for example the 60 degrees Celsius temperature I require for that purpose I am going to use 
certain heating media here in this case the coils they are being used and through these coils say for example the steam a hot fluid steam is going into the vessel through the coils how much amount of the steam that is that should go into the coils so that i have to maintain the temperature at 60 degrees celsius this is what i require for the process 60 degrees celsius temperature so considering this this is what is my deter set point i have to manipulate the amount of the steam into the system so i am going to increase if the temperature is say 50 degrees celsius i am going to slightly increase or open the control valve so that the more amount of the flow that will go into the system and after a certain time it will respond that the from 50 degrees celsius its temperature is going to increase to say 55 degrees celsius 60 degrees celsius and say it has achieved to the 65 degrees celsius instead of 60 degrees celsius then again i have to reduce the control valve so that the input of the steam into the system that will be reduced as a result by manipulating this control valve and how much amount of the steam that is going into the system i have to achieve the final targeted value of 60 degrees celsius in the outlet temperature so this is the example related to the our system the previous example of acceleration and achieving the desired speed that is a general common example so these are the other examples also so this is what a process is there a certain input that is to be given certain output is there this is what any process that is we do the processing a certain input raw materials has to pass through certain reactors or certain process and you will get the certain output what is going into the output that is to be measured then it has to control with the desired set point and this controller gives the action to the final control element this final control element is nothing but your control valve now consider a bike example bike its desired value that is set as the 40 degree uh, 40 kilometers per hour this is signal is sent to our brain now the process the vehicle vehicle is indicating the value of say 65 uh, 45 kilometers per hour that is what the measuring element the speedometer speedometer that is nothing but a measuring element it goes or observed with the help of the eyes goes into the processor that is your brain compares it with the desired value of 40 kilometers per hour a certain error that is there 40 and the 45 kilometers per hour so the controller takes the action and gives the signal to our hand hand is the final control element so that the control of the carburetor fuel entering into the carburetor that is controlled and reduces the speed uh, reduces the flow of fuel into the carburetor into the engine so this is what the process that is taking place similarly our example of the vessel tank that is also there so the final temperature i have to maintain it at a 60 degree celsius my measuring is a thermometer or the resistance that will measure the temperature then there is a controller that is available 
electronics controller which take the decision it compares with the desired value and gives the signal to the final control element that is our control fall this is what is our final control element control fall it gives the signal to this control wall here i am going to measure I am going to measure the temperature here. That means a measuring element is available here. Then it goes to a controller. This controller takes a certain action and gives the signal to this control fall. That is nothing but your final control element. So this process goes like this. A measuring element, a thermometer which is available or a thermic resistance which is available. It gives the signal to a controller. Controller is provided with already a set point of say 60 degrees Celsius temperature. 60 degrees Celsius temperature. So it has to compare with this measured value and depending on that it gives the signal to this control fault. Control fault takes the corrective action and adjust the flow of the steam which is entering into the coils. So this is what the general control system acts. Now input is there, output is our concern. So similarly the other examples are also there. In any process desired value is defined based on the control objective. This control objectives, they can be safety aspects, environmental protection, equipment protection, product quality, profit optimization, monitoring and diagnostics. All these are your control objectives. That means you are either going to measure the temperature, pressure, flow rate, concentration, all these things that is to be managed. Then what does the control system do basically? The control to maintain the desired conditions in a physical system by adjusting the selected variable in this system. A certain output hai ya input hai, usko merko desired value ke upar adjust karne ka hai with the help of the other variables. So in this, to maintain the desired condition in a physical system, by adjusting the selected variable into the system. A specific value or range is used as a desired value for the controlled variable. The conditions of the system are measured. Each system has to control the calculation or algorithm. In advanced systems you require to do, do the certain algorithms. The result of calculations are implemented by final control element. So final control element that is what you use your control wall which is finally adjusting the position. Then there are different control types. The feedback control and feed forward control. In the feedback control that is the direct measurement of the control variable to adjust the value of the manipulated variable. One is your control variable another is your manipulated variable. So what is controlled variable? Now in this case the temperature we want to maintain the constant that is your controlled variable or the acceleration speed what is 40 kilometers per hour this is what a controlled variable and the manipulated variable I am going to adjust the position of a control fall. The amount of the steam entering into the system, that is the manipulated variable. The next is the feed forward control. Use the direct measurement of the disturbance to adjust the values of manipulated variable. So feed forward is what you are actually measuring these disturbances and manipulating or predicting what is going to happen. If I am going to change the inlet temperature, inlet temperature of a fluid which is coming into the vessel, uska temperature I change kar diya hai. Or I can change 
the temperature of the steam itself. Pressure I can change, steam pressure. So that a predictive or corrective action is taken instead of measuring the final value. Then there are cascade controls also. Different combinations of feed forward and feed backward controllers. We will study this feed forward and feed backward controllers in detail in subsequent classes. So why it is necessary to achieve the desired value to reduce the disturbances and to optimize the things. Why it is control possible? Certain sensors, corrective actions that is required and ultimately the equipment design that is done. How is the controlling done? The process can be controlled either by the human being manually or by necessary instrumentation automatically. Now when you drive a vehicle, you control it by the accelerator by the manual process. But this system is a single one. So it is easy to manage the speed. But if there are different variables, like my vehicle is uh, instead of uh, running on the highway, it is there in the city now. So there are a lot of variables. Koi idhar se aara hai, koi udhar se aara hai, kahi pe eh, signal laga hua hai, kahi pe police traffic hai, he is stopping you. So all these are uncontrollable, unexpected load variables. So this are your automobile driving example. It's a feedback control system. Then your automatic control is implemented with the electronic equipment which uses the level of the level of current or voltage to represent the values to be communicated. So finally, you are going to communicate with the current and voltages talked in terms of the electronics. Then where is this control implemented? The control items as your sensors and final control elements are in the process and displays the control calculations might be both in the process and in the centralized control facility. So there is a centralized control facility called the control room. Now in this control room there are all electronic guard gates are there and to this electronic gadgets certain input that is available and certain output that is available. So you are going to manipulate with the help of certain programs, certain algorithms to adjust the position of the control ball. So inputs to these controllers, they are nothing but your sensors and the output from these controllers is nothing but your final control elements. But they are all talked in terms of the electronic signals that is your current and the voltages. So generally the plant never operates on the automatic pilot and a person is always present to perform the task not automated, to optimize the operation, to interfere the situations when an unusual or dangerous situations occur. Everywhere there is a human interference. 100% automation is not there. Then what does the control engineer do? Process designing, measurement, final control element, control structure, then your control calculations. Then the process designing. A key factor in the control engineering is the designing of the process so that it can be controlled well. For this purpose, the system should be responsive and few disturbances should occur. So few disturbances when you are driving a vehicle on the road, you try to avoid the different, uh, you are having a certain vision and accordingly you take the decision to turn to the left, to turn to the right and depending on that you find your own path on the road. This is what 
our mind to that is what designing of a road which road which path i should take so similarly for this controller also that is i am going to use the different processes different systems that is to be implemented a responsive control systems means the control variable responds quickly to adjustments in the manipulated variable then frequency and magnitude of disturbances should be reduced our systems should be designed such that they give the good response what is in the output output is nothing but a response in terms of the desired values of temperature pressure flow rate concentration there is a measurement that is which measurements should be done where the measurement should be done that is what the location of a sensor type of a sensor that is for the selection where to fit that is location of the sensor one can control only what is measured wahi cheez aap control kar sakte ho jo cheez measure ho sakti hai the behavior of a human being that cannot be measured so it is difficult to control the human being but the systems what is expected that can be controlled one engineer should select the sensor that measure the important variables rapidly reliably and with sufficient accuracy so rapid measurement reliable measurement and with the desired accuracy the next is the final control element final control element provide the necessary changes in the manipulated variable this is what a manipulated variable one is the measured variable and the second is the manipulated variable which are determined by the control calculations the selection of best final control element and selection of the location are important considerations in the control structure the engineer must decide some very basic issues in designing a control systems this is similar to adjusting either the hot or cold water valves opening to the control the temperature of water in shower or making this directly on the heating source so you are going to finally adjust the position of a valve position of a control valve which is going to give me the desired flow rate so that the temperature of the fluid that is to be maintained constant then the control calculations after the variables and control structure have been selected the model equations are developed which use the measured and the desired values in calculating the change in manipulated variable so these model equations they are the basic considerations of uh, this uh, process control so you require these model equations basic equations and they have to be developed depending on the type of the system so a system for a particular system i am going to develop a generalized equation and with this generalized equation it becomes easy to manipulate or easy to play on these systems computer understands the numbers and numbers when it will appear in the equations and that is why we try to develop the equations for the various systems how is the process control documented that is also necessary the documentation is required for the further 
decisions. The studies on process control system should be documented in order to understandable the stable and the unstable systems. Then what are some simple control strategies? In the plant, there exists a large number of possibilities for placing the sensors and final control element. Every process control system is to be verified for the casual process relationship, determinations of the action, the controller would take the responsive disturbances. Now, in the process equipment design, we have drawn such lines or such uh, uh, symbols. Now, all these are given related to this process control. This is a solid line. This is a dash line. And this is what the sensors they are determined. Now, A is your analyzer. F is the flow rate, L is the level, P is the pressure, T is the temperature. So your basic uh, uh, symbols they are used and can be put in this circle. That is a level transmitter, LT, temperature transmitter or pressure, whatever it is. Then the different process control laws that is there. These are the general you can say. No need of going into the details. Behavior of the system variables. So manipulated variables and the controlled variables. These are the two important aspects that we have already talked. The maintaining a temperature control or maintaining a constant speed. That is your controlled variable desired variable and manipulated is your accelerator or the steam flow rate. There exists a specific range for the variables then the effectiveness of a control to maintain the process at the desired condition depends on sign and magnitude of the response, how the system that is going to behave for the certain change. Now, we will see a bike example of 40 kilometers per hour that is what our desired value is and you are using a regular bike your bike you can achieve this desired speed very easily and conveniently on your bike but if you are on the other person's bike friend's bike then achieving this desired condition of say 40 kilometers per hour it requires more manipulation for the new person because how the speed of that vehicle is going to vary depending on your corrective action of the accelerator so what is the response how that behaving behavior of the vehicle Every system, every vehicle will behave slightly different way. And that is why the response that is also important. This analysis of process variable in the system and the sensitivity of the dynamic behavior of those variations are important in the modeling. So ultimately, the modeling that is to be done, a numerical algorithm, certain equations that are to be developed then there is a feed forward feedback controller and feed forward controller feedback controller the process flow outlet temperature this is a temperature transmitter that is what a sensor it is measuring a thermocouple or a thermic resistance that is used. That is what a sensor temperature transmitter. It sends the signal to the controller and his controller sends the signal to the control ball. This is nothing but your final control element where the steam that is going into the system. 
whether it's a heat exchanger or whether it's a vessel in which the heating is being done through the coils. Now there is a field forward control system also. Now I am measuring the inlet temperature of the system. So temperature measurement is for the inlet flow rate instead of putting it on the outlet flow rate. Instead of putting it on the outlet flow rate, now I have put this temperature senses, sensor in the inlet flow rate. This measure temperature that sends signal to the controller and then finally to the final control element that is nothing but your control for. The same system is there but feed forward and feed backward. For feed forward arrangement I am taking the action based on the inlet temperature. In the feed backward I am taking the action based on the actual measured value. So that is what the basic difference of the feed forward and feed backward control systems are there. Then you require the certain different management or the processes where one has to uh, develop this uh, final control systems. And you require certain engineering activities and some, some information based systems. That is what this uh, uh, flow block diagram represents. So these are the different examples which we can see it. So this is what the process that is there we have talked related to this process design versus process analysis that is required certain block diagram that is also there. The block diagrams and the process flow diagrams PFDs and in advanced stage P and ID diagram process and instrumentation diagram. This is the process flow diagram and there is a process and instrumentation diagrams are also there where the details related to the instrumentation and the instrument lineup that is also mentioned in addition to the basic flow diagram now this is uh, any process any flow diagram it incorporates the different unit operations and unit processes so this uh, block diagram that is uh, going to give or re represents the unit operation or the unit process. So this is what is my process, a single unit operation I can say and it represented in a block diagram, in a block. Say for example a heat exchanger, what we have seen in the previous slides, that is the heat exchanger is there. Heat exchanger is a process and to this heat exchanger, say the kerosene temperature that is to be reduced. So kerosene that is your raw material and the product that is there as a kerosene but with a different temperature. This is what my requirement is there. Now it can be your reaction vessel also. A certain raw material that is there and the certain product that will be getting you. 
So there are four uh, different kinds of mixers, reactors, splitters, separator. All these are your different unit of processes and unit operations that will be there incorporating the input and the output. So this is uh, one of the examples. You can see these different examples. Now these are the common symbols that have been used for the pump, valves, heat exchangers, then your distillation columns, joints, compressors. So all these are your splitter. So all these are your symbols and that are to be clubbed into the process flow diagram. This is simple your distillation and you are getting the gases, gasoline, petrochemical students they can understand this uh, very well. Other students can also think of this flow sheet. Then classification of uh, different processes that is your whether it's a batch operation, continuous operation or semi-batch operation that is their different examples. So more of the examples are there. 